still doing the Everyone's a Critic Horror Movie Challenge and getting caught up in some of the videos whenever I get the time. So the prompt I'm talking about today is low budget, big box office. And I decided to pick one of my favorite films that I haven't watched in a long time, which is Saw because I believe it had a budget of maybe one and a half million and it grossed something like 55 million at the box office. So this was a huge, huge success and the Saw franchise in general has gone on to be one of the best known film franchises. But I'm talking about just the first Saw movie today. Actually, I'm gonna talk about it. We'll get there. I have to talk a little bit about the others because there were things that stood out to me in this rewatch. I love the series. I've seen all of the Saw movies and because of that they tend to get a little mixed up for me. So when I watched the first one again I was a little startled at some of the elements that I had forgotten were part of the first movie and then didn't really continue. For example, the um, the puzzle pieces that were cut out that really stopped happening after a certain amount of time like that's something that was only in i think maybe the first one and never really done again i'm not really sure why or because his name is jigsaw so you think jigsaw puzzle but also saw for the sawing so that one kind of threw me for a loop a little bit when i remembered that aspect because as a fan of the film franchise, I completely forgotten about the aspect because it was so underutilized and underplayed. But I also see why this movie made so much money. It is gripping, it's gritty, it's dark, it's intense, and it's really good. The, the writing and the acting is really good. Of course, Wesley from The Princess Bride reappears so many years later, like I hadn't seen him anything for years, and suddenly I watched Saw and there he was, and I was like, oh. That's cool. The other aspect that really startled me, I think, about this movie is that in the later Saw movies, most of the time, they try to make John Kramer more of a sympathetic character. So even though he is the villain, they really try to sell him as something of a hero in a lot of ways. For um, And there's going to be spoilers here, so please don't get mad at me. So for example, if you look at Saw 10, I believe it was, he is going out of his way to appear like a good guy, even though he's horribly maiming and torturing people, but he's also trying to save a kid and things like that. And I think he says something about not hurting kids and he is really big on teaching people lessons, but it seems like through a lot of the later movies that he doesn't touch so quote unquote innocent people. But if you go to the first Saw movie, he actually kidnaps a little girl and absolutely traumatizes and terrorizes her and then wants Zep to kill her. Like, he wants her to die if her father fails his test. Now, it's supposed to be a kind of punishment for the father to learn something, but it completely ignores, obviously, the girl and that she didn't do anything to get into that situation. So I think that's something that they kind of moved away from with the later Saw movies of threatening or hurting children. And while it was really gripping and in a way effective in the original Saw movie, it added a layer of terror and depth to it. I can see why they would move away from it. It was just startling looking at my perception of God, my perception of John Kramer having watched the later movies more recently as opposed to going back and seeing the way he was portrayed in the first movie. So that didn't really make much sense to me. I'm not sure if there's a reason that they stopped having him kill kids. I want, don't know if they wanted to change his character to make him more of a sympathetic character. Whatever the reason, it was a little jarring. Even though I remember that it happened, it was jarring seeing that directly contrasted with the last Saw movie that I watched, which was Saw 10, or Saw X, however people say it. So. That was an aspect that really startled me a little. And also that um, the games were a little weird in this one. So some of them were really intricate. 
A lot of them seem very short time based, which holds true for a lot of the Saw games as the series goes, but I never understood why John Kramer or Jigsaw would select some people for extended games and some people for very quick short ones. And a lot of them seem like they're pretty well set up for failure, like it is down to the wire. And if you're capable of making it, there's very little room for error, which is, I guess, the point. He seems like kind of a bitter person, especially in the first movie, and he just wants to hurt people. But I was interested that the game seemed a little different. For example, Adam's goal was to, to live, and um, Dr. Gordon's goal was to kill him. But it didn't really totally make sense to me. Like, the more I watched the first one, the less it made sense with what I know of the rest of the series. So it just didn't completely fit in with it. And also John Kramer actually physically being in the room is not something you really see that much in later games. Um, and that was pretty risky move that he took doing that. Um, I did like the key in the bathtub thing. So that was kind of a cool thing when they put that in there because Adam could have just gotten up and gotten out of there if he'd had the key. So really his game was as simple as looking around and finding the right thing and getting himself out of there if he'd wanted to, but obviously it went down the drain and ruined that plan. And I liked seeing Amanda and her origin story, knowing that later she goes on to be such a huge part of Jigsaw's group. So it was interesting to watch that. How he picks people is obviously interesting. I think it's people that he has some kind of connection to. Like he can't just pick, pick random people and decide on what they did wrong. So he must have contact with all these people, see them interact with them, and decide that they're people that need to learn some kind of lesson on the value of life. But um, let me know what you think of these seeming contradictions and the differences in the Saw films from the first one to the more recent ones and if you know the reason behind any of these changes or why they got rid of things like the puzzle piece because those things were not totally clear to me but I'm interested and I still really really enjoyed this movie on rewatch so despite not being confused by some aspects or not understanding them I still did really enjoy watching it again.